Hey guys, welcome to Medical Cannabis with Dr. Thomas. Today, we'll be discussing cannabis and asthma. First, I need to give everybody a warning that there might be parts of this video that might be a little sensitive to the younger viewers. Also, I'll be using medical terms for my medical community, but in the bubbles, you're going to see the plain language of what I say. This way, I'm serving both communities, doctors, patients. With that said, let's do the dang thing. All right, asthma. Often defined as a chronic inflammatory disorder of the airways. The clinical treatment of asthma involves medications that decrease inflammatory mediators and medications that decrease airway resistance, essentially widening the airways, making it easier to breathe. One group of powerful mediators that cause inflammation in our bodies are called prostaglandins. We already know that cannabis works in many ways to decrease inflammation. And one of those ways is by decreasing the production of these prostaglandins. The medications that help open the airways of asthmatic patients are called beta-2 agonists. They activate the beta-2 receptor on cells that control the smooth muscle constriction and dilation in human bronchi. Most people are familiar with the commonly known beta-2 agonist medication called albuterol. We now have good evidence that cannabis is also able to activate these beta-2 receptors within the airway. THC could potentially fill the role of a rescue bronchodilator in cases of beta-2 agonist resistance and provide an additional tool for clinicians to treat asthma. Typical inhalers contain adrenergic, adrenaline-like stimulants which work well, but tend to heighten anxiety, blood pressure, and heart rate. It would be nice to have more alternatives to treat bronchospasms. Beta-2 receptor agonists like albuterol are powerful bronchodilators and are at the forefront of asthma symptom relief. Although patients who use them frequently develop partial resistance to them, which means they are not as effective anymore. This can be a particularly serious problem during severe attacks, where high dose beta-2 agonist treatment is the frontline therapy. Speaking of frontline therapy, imagine this. It's the emergency department night shift on a cold December evening in the Bronx, New York. <clears throat> Suddenly, the emergency department doors are kicked in, and there's two parents holding their lifeless eight-year-old boy. They're crying and screaming for a doctor. The boy is having a severe asthma attack and is already blue in the face. I immediately stop what I'm doing, run to the parents, take the boy in my arms. I tell a resident to call pediatric code as I'm running to the trauma bay with the boy. We start running a code on him. We do CPR, place an endotracheal tube. Start albuterol, place an IO. Start fluids, steroids, meg sulfate, lidocaine, epi, place dual chest tubes, bilateral needle decompressions, double sequential cardioversion. We did everything we could. He was the first and only kid who ever died in front of me. Eventually, another doctor had to physically pull me away because I couldn't let go of him. But 
What if I didn't have to? What if I didn't have to let go? What if there was another different rescue bronco dilator we could have tried? Could cannabis inhibit this severe smooth muscle contraction that occurs in the airways during asthma attacks? Well, multiple studies show that prejunctional cannabinoid 1 receptors inhibit cholinergic mediated contraction in human bronchi. This basically means there is a receptor for cannabis molecules on the nerves which control the constriction and dilation of our lungs. When this receptor is activated, it decreases contraction in our airways. Less contraction equals more dilation, which correlates to bigger open airways. These findings warrant further investigation, specifically clinical trials testing the bronchodilator effects of THC and beta-2 agonist-resistant asthmatic patients. If this is a condition you deal with and you want to speak to your doctor, I suggest we connect. I have specific articles and questions you can take to your doctor, which will initiate a smooth conduit for easier, open communication between you and your physician. I am so passionate about getting this information out to people. I really want you to share this with anyone who needs to hear it. And please subscribe because communication is the way we're going to make a difference in this world. Sincerely, I'm here for you. Tell your friends. Tell your patients. Tell your bud tenders. Tell your grandmothers. Let's educate the masses together. I hope you learned something today. Thank you guys for listening. If you have any comments, topics you want me to speak on, or anything you'd like to say regarding the video, please send me a message. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, keep an open mind.